And welcome to the Aaron Katzman Show. I'm your host, Aaron Katzman. We speak to your life, your money, and your investments. And as always, we're coming to you from the spiritual and soon-to-be financial capital of the world, Jerusalem, Israel. If you like this content, please hit the like button below. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to both the YouTube channel and to the podcast. And if you know somebody who might find this rather interesting, not totally interesting, but rather interesting, feel free to hit the share button and share it with them as well. So the question is, where's your money? Do you know where your money goes? We had a family uh, meal recently. And we we're talking about, I mentioned this in the past, I think, where we talked about my rants about the need to, to use cash and the fact that we're becoming a cashless society, which I think is very unfortunate. And that of my children who are new to bank accounts and, you know, got debit cards and, you know, have their eyes open because they think they're going to, you know, go down the route of credit cards and what have you. And they're like, yeah, but it's so easy. You just whip out a piece of plastic and you pay for something. So, you know, I say that, well, do you know how much money, where the money goes? How much money do you have left in the bank? You know, how much are you spending? How much is coming in? They have no concept. I'm not picking on my kids. This is something that happens all of the time. Where does your money go when you spend, right? When you just take out your card and you go swipe or you put it on top of the thing, right? You put it on top of the little machine and, and, and debits. It's not so simple to stay on top of your expenses unless, you know, you go that extra mile and write everything down or you have some kind of an app which, which um, connects so that all your expenses go into the app. I filled out a questionnaire for some financial services company, and they were asking me about all these different types of payment plans, most of which I didn't know because most of them involved a lot of technology. And for those of you who know, I'm still stuck in like the 1950s. I'm not so, you know, I, I don't want to say fight technology, but I sort of like, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of change in, in multiple uh, respects, and technology is a big challenge. To that, to that character trait, let's put it that way. But anyway, so the survey that they were asking was again about all these payment plans, some of them, which I mean, I've heard of everything. I didn't know how exactly it worked. But then they asked like the benefits of each plan. So some of them were like, you know, you can cheat on your taxes and stuff like that, right? So we're not going to talk about that. But ease of payments. Uh, and they did ask, um, are you able to keep track of your expenses? Which I thought was rather interesting. Because I find that one of the beauties about using cash, if you're um, disciplined, is that you know you take out X amount every week. You know where that money goes, right? You spend it. You can just look in your wallet and say, "Oh, you know, I've got a hundred bucks. I've got you know fourteen dollars left, so I know exactly how much money I spent." When you are using plastic, a you know, I'm not even going to talk about the emotional ease of spending right there's something about putting your hand in your pocket and pulling out your wallet and saying well that's the last 20 dollars that i got you know should i really spend it on you know a dozen cheese danishes or should i spend it something more important right i'm not going to get into any of that but there's a certain emotional detachment let's say when you pull out a credit card or a debit card you just you know okay so here it is it's plastic right it's not the same pain that we feel when we use cash. But even when you use the cloud, you just take out your, the plastic and the plastic and the plastic and the plastic. How much did you spend at the end of the day? Well, I don't know. How much did you spend at the end of the month? I don't know. You know, so you might go in and look at your bank account and you say, well, you know, I started the year with, uh, I started the month with 5,000 and now I've got, you know, 150. So I must have spent 48.50, maybe. You know where the things are going. You have direct payments uh, that come out every month, stuff like that. So automated payments. It, it's not clear. And again, I think that it really impacts your spending because of that emotional side, because you don't feel it. And it's so like not emotionally, there's nothing emotional about it that you just, you know, whip it out again. And at the end of the day, you end up spending a lot more money. So again, I'm not going to speak about the cashless part, but what I'm going to say, if you're going to use debit and credit cards, You've got to, and that's the way the world, the fact of the matter is, if we don't have much choice, right, we're going to have to do that, right? Governments throughout the world are forcing us to use plastic, which is sort of ironic considering there's this whole big environmental movement. 
just think about that, that they're moving us towards a world of plastic, even though they're all against plastic. Go figure. Um, I hope the cards are sustainable and reusable and recyclable. You've got to create a disciplined plan of how it is you are going to keep budgeting by using a credit card or a debit card. It's not such a simple thing to do, but you've got to do it, which means you've got to check your statements on a regular ongoing basis just to make sure and write it down. I would still, you know, stick it in, get an app or whatever, and stick it in, make sure that your budgeting is, is on course, right? You still want to have your monthly written budget and you're going to have to figure out a way, right, to, to correlate the two so that the two are actually attached so that you actually know where you stand vis-a-vis -vis your budget, even though you're using a credit card and you don't, A, you don't feel the cost, you don't feel the expenses, B, you might be doing payments, all kinds of crazy things, right? Which take, which, which are anti-cash, right? Which take us away, take, takes us away from really what we're trying to accomplish here with the budget. So it's going to be on you and there are no excuses, right? If you go into debt, that's on you, okay? You can't blame the government at the end of the day. You can, you can whine about it. You can say, wow, this is stupid. But at the end of the day, if those are the rules that they institute and you've got to play by the rules, so you've got to play by the rules and there's nobody to blame but yourself. Maybe a little bit harder to keep track of things, but you've got to do it. Okay, so the, the you know to answer the question of where is your money going, you've got to figure out where it's going. Okay, you've got to still write down your expenses um, at the end of the day or the end of the week, you know, go in, log into your card and see what did I spend my money on? And are those things that are in my budget? And if they're not, well, I better tighten up my budget. And I better tighten up the use of my card. Otherwise, I'm going to be up the creek. Know where your money is going. It's very, very important to, to be able to do that. If you know where your money goes, even if you're not, you know, you're not using cash, you're using credit cards or debit cards, whatever it is. Um, if you know where the money's going, you sh there's a good chance you'll be able to stay on budget. If you don't know where the money's going, good luck. You've been tuning into the Aaron Kantzman Show. We speak about your life and money and your investments. If you like this content, please hit the like button below. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to both the podcast and to the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll speak to you soon.